Are you looking for a gimbal that you can use with a regular camera and a smartphone and even an action camera? Well, stick around. I'm about to show you just such a gimbal. Hi, I'm Bill Booz, and this is Photography and Technology Tools, and the topic today is my Xiong Crane M and how I'm using it with several of my different cameras. I did an uh, episode of my video updates just recently and kind of went over this a little bit, but I wanted to go a little bit, a little bit more in depth with some more footage of using it with the different cameras. So I used it with my GM5 with the 20 millimeter lens, with the 12 to 32 kit lens that comes with this camera. It's a Panasonic camera. I used it with my Nextbit Robin Android smartphone, and I used it with my little Yi action camera, which is a GoPro knockoff that I got a couple years ago. And as I said, I've used it with my, I've used my smartphones, both my iPhone 7 Plus, which I'm using to film this, and the, the Robin with the ND filter, as well as my super wide auto clip lens attachment. With everything, there's a pro and a con. And the pro and a con here is, the pro of course, is that you can use it with all these different cameras. And I could use it with my OMD cameras, my uh, EM5 Mark II and my EM1, because they do weight meet, even with lenses attached, small lenses, they still will work as far as weight goes, but they're a little bit heavier. And so I don't see myself using them that much and I'll probably just use these cameras for the most part. So that's a pro. The, the con is that each one requires a different balancing act. And uh, I suspect over time, as I do this more, the balancing of the various cameras attached to the Crane M will become kind of second nature. It's not a big deal. And it really isn't that big a deal. It doesn't take very long. And that's really not a bad trade-off to get the advantage of being able to use a variety of cameras on the, on the gimbal. Whereas with the Smooth Q, with the Smooth 4, they're specifically s smartphone gimbals. And you're limited to just using smartphones, really. I mean, you can, you can work them to use these little action cameras, but they are mainly for smartphones. I'll tell you though, one of the things that I've noticed over the last several weeks in, in experimenting with all these different cameras is using a gimbal properly does take practice. And that's one thing I've said, I say it all the time, you need to practice with all these new tools. And my problem is I don't really practice enough with each new tool that I get. So I've kind of stopped buying stuff, you'll be glad to hear, and I'm intending to use the things I have a little bit more extensively so I get used to using them more and using them better. However, it, it definitely, using a gimbal definitely smooths out the footage you get compared to taking a smartphone and, and doing one of these numbers. You know, the first thing, of course, and I noticed this looking at some videos just recently, people videoing somebody performing in the street and they're going across the crowd and they go zzzz fast. The, the key is to go slowly. And when you're using a gimbal, going slowly is really important to assure you that you get smoother footage. Now, one of the problems with my using a gimbal at all, and, and I, I have to admit, I do have to sort of force myself to use it because I don't think cinematically. And so I'm not really thinking of, well, this would be a great place to use the gimbal. I'm usually putting the camera in a gimbal that I'm looking and it's usually this backyard, as you'll see in the sample footage that I show you today. So there are a lot of things to get used to, practicing and doing it properly and, and when to use a gimbal at all. Let's take a look at each camera individually and show you some footage. First off, let's start with the Panasonic GM5. Now I have the 20 millimeter attached right now, but I did try it with a 12 to 32, which is a very sm relatively small, probably comes out just a little bit more than this, and when extended a little bit further, but it's a small and lightweight kit lens that comes with this camera. And so it's a good choice because it is small and light. So let's take a look at some of the footage that I got with that. All right, I have the GM5 with the 12 to 32 millimeter lens attached and it's set at 12 millimeters. And the GM5, and I'm, the audio is being picked up directly from the camera. I'm right behind the camera as I hold it in the gimbal. And the GM5 shoots at 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second. So I have it set at 30 frames per second. 
And accordingly, given the 180 rule, I have my shutter speed set to a constant 1 over 60. And I've got it in a mode where if, if I go down, it follows down with me. And if I go up, it should come up. Right. So a little bit different view than I've shown you in other sample footage. But now if I do a um, let's see, one click, now it stays even where I had it. And coming around and staying right there. So I'm going to do a two clicks, one, two, and now it's back, I think, to normal. So that is normal. Oh, it just got really bright. I'm going to stay over here where it's shady. And now I'm going to turn around because now I'm going to do a um, one, two, three, and it puts it in selfie mode. And so I have no idea whether I'm totally in the frame or not. When I had that 25 millimeter on this, it was too close. So I'm assuming this is uh, reasonably, uh, has me reasonably in the frame. So that's selfie mode. Okay, so th this is a good choice because you know, it is, the, the lens is small, it's only 68 grams. And together with the camera, which I believe is 211, that's still a nice lightweight package, but above the minimum compared to when I try to use the Yi. And the, the 12 millimeter setting gives me a, at a 35 millimeter equivalency of a 24 millimeter field of view. So that's not bad. All the way up to a 32, which is really 64 millimeters. So then I tried the, the GM5 with my Panasonic 25 millimeter uh, F1.4 lens. It, 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 and I haven't used that lens very much recently. So this was kind of forced me to dig it out and, and give it a try. Now it's a heavier lens, it's a little bit bigger. And the largest payload the Crane M can handle is 650 grams. And so the GM5 is 211 grams, as I said, and the 25 millimeter lens is uh, 200 millimeters. So it gives me a total of 411 grams, well under the 650 limit. And uh, though I like the look of the footage I got with the 25 millimeter, I, I decided to try the 20. This has an f1.7 lens on it as well, or the aperture. So this prime lens is, is smaller than the 25 millimeter, and of course it's lighter at 87 grams. So here's some footage with the 20 millimeter. And I'm recording audio directly into the camera's microphone, so it's probably going to pick up a lot of ambient noise, such as traffic behind me and so on. But now I'm going to put it in selfie mode, and I'm going to turn around this way. Okay, so that's very dark because of the setting I have. One, two, three, and it goes into selfie mode. And so <clears throat> I'm now holding it arm's length away. And with the 20 millimeter, I'm just curious to see if uh, I'm all in the frame and if it has um, come focused on me properly. With the 25 millimeter, it was kind of in and out. It kept focusing on things behind me. So maybe manual focus is the way to go. But uh, I'm going to move a little bit out of the sun here, so the exposure behind me should be the same. This is a nice little camera, and the Crane M is a little heavy. I've got the tripod on it from my uh, monopod, but um, it would be difficult to carry this around a long time without resting. So next I try my little Yi action camera. As I said, this is a GoPro knockoff. Got it a couple years ago, I think for $80. And then even with the battery inserted, it's it's very light. So it's it's just 77 grams. And that's equivalent to about 2.7 ounces. So the since the minimum weight load for the, the Crane M is actually 125 grams, I had to get some weight onto this. And first and I used this little spacer, this little something that came with something I ordered, and I may have cut it actually, it's like foam to make it a little bit bigger so it would fit in the, um, the smartphone expandable holder. And then that still wasn't heavy enough, so I, I, did, I tried a couple different things. I tried some money, I tried some uh, washers, but then I found in my little grab bag this uh, hinge that I wasn't using, and it was perfect because it it's flat and it fits nicely in the holder, and it added enough weight so that it worked. The, the Yi has an uh, ultra-wide field of view of 155 degrees and so it gives you rather a wide looking result. So let's take a look at the Yi. In so I'm out in the back and I'm going to walk down here as I've done with other videos and I'm recording from the Yi's 
built-in microphone, so it'll be interesting to see how that works. Uh, a little bit of sun glare there. There's a crepe myrtle. <clears throat> Curious to see how it's... Oh, there's a bee. Huh. See if we can see the bee. Can we see the bee? This is a, a wide 155 degree field of view. It's a rather wide lens. And you can see the, our neighbor's house is getting real overexposed. And if we go into the garden house, the old garage, how's that looking? Okay, so now let's go to selfie mode. Now one of the nice things is I can, I have to control the, the camera with my iPhone so I can see what the camera is seeing as I hold my iPhone in the other hand. So one, two, three, because in the selfie mode and there I am. Okay, and I'm way overexposed. So if I turn around so it's pointing at me in the garage, that's a little bit better. So there's that. Now if I put this down, because I do have the tripod legs from my monopod mounted on this, and can I turn? Yeah, I can turn that down a little bit. So I can go back here and you can see that the curtains on the front of the garage. You can see the inside of the garage because this is a wide one. As I okay, see. so you see the how wide it is. It's, again, it's, so it's got some uses, I think. So my next test was with my iPhone 7 Plus, which I'm using right now, and I tried it with the Allo clip attached, as you can see in the in the picture on the screen, and uh, this. Allo clip is the super wide, which is um, 120 degree field of view. So not as wide as the Yi is, but still wider than any of these other prime or uh, zoom lenses that I have. Okay, so let's take a look at the footage that I got with the iPhone. All right, I am using my iPhone 7 Plus alone, uh, mounted in the Crane M gimbal and standing in front of our uh, garage that we've turned into a garden house, outdoor entertainment room. And I'm sweeping around to the backyard. And the uh, crepe myrtle, which we've seen before. And this is because I want to compare this footage. All right, I've attached the Allo Clip super wide lens, and you can see that it's displaying a lot more of the garage and the trellis next to it and even some of the trees next to that. And as I come around as I did before, the backyard, again, it's a little bit overblown. But I can't use this together with the ND filter, at least I don't think I can, maybe I can. And it should be obvious though that this is showing you a much wider view. So it's nice to know. And attaching the olive clip really was not that big a deal. It um, uh, obviously it was off balance because the Allo clip has more has added weight to the left hand side of the uh, cell phone but uh, simply by moving it back a little bit so that it didn't lean forward and moving the one motor arm uh, just slightly it balanced very easily so um, one of the things is that the balancing of this gimbal with different types of cameras is not that difficult so one of the the great advantages of the Crane M over the, the, the Smooth Q, which I still have, and the Smooth 4, which I returned, uh, is, as I said, it's, this is not just for smartphones. This is for regular cameras, small cameras, mirrorless, that's why the M. And since, it's, since it will handle small cameras, it'll handle the smartphones with things added to them, like these variety of lenses that are available on the market for adding to your smartphone. And likewise, the ND filter. So I didn't use the ND filter on my smart, on my iPhone for this test, but I did use it on the Nextbit Robin. So let's take a look at the footage that I captured using my Android phone, my Nextbit Robin phone, with the ND filter attached to it. Okay, using the ND filter on my iPhone 7 Plus in the Crane M gimbal. So let's see 
to go into selfie mode. One, two, three. And there we are. So now I'm looking into the lens. Presumably it's not overexposed. But we'll see. All right. Not bad, huh? So that footage, as I said, was with the newer ND filter attached to the Robin. And the advantage of using the ND filter is that, especially if you're recording moving things, you want the shutter speed to be twice the value of the frames per second. Since I was using Filmic Pro on the Nextbit Robin, I had set the shutter speed and locked it in at, or, uh, at 1 over 48, twice the 24 frames per second that I was recording at. And what happens is if you set your shutter speed to that slow a shutter, then it's allowing a lot of light to come in. And since these have a fixed aperture, and it's usually a fairly wide open aperture, it, and, and it brings the ISO down in, into the 30s, but it's still too bright. And so by putting the ND filter over the lens, you're able to darken until it gives you a reasonable exposure of the scene. So that's the advantage and the use of an ND filter. So you've seen this now with the E action camera. You've seen it with my GM5 with two different lenses on it. And you've seen it with the Nextbit Robin and my iPhone 7 Plus. It really is a very versatile gimbal, the Crane M from Zoom. And I really uh, can't recommend it highly enough. I'm so, it, you know, it's $100 more than the Smooth Q was originally and the Smooth 4 is now. It is, it's, to me, it's worth that extra $100 to get the versatility of being able to use it with these a variety of cameras. And you'll find lots of videos on YouTube talking about how to balance it. So I'm not going into that and how to use a gimbal. There are you know, tons of, of using gimbals videos. So I encourage you to take a look at those and I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. And if you like this, if it was useful to you, please give it a like. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next episode of Photography and Technology Tools.